Phagocytosis is a process which is defined as engulfment and killing of the microorganisms. Engulfment means picking up the microorganisms and then the microorganisms have to be killed. Now this process of phagocytosis is done by mainly two types of cells in our body and these cells are neutrophils and macrophages and these are known as professional phagocytes. But there are certain differences between neutrophils and macrophages when they work as phagocytes. First of all, neutrophils work both in circulation as well as tissue as they can now go from circulation into the tissue by diabetes and there, there they can engulf the microorganism and kill it. But macrophages are the ones which are residing in the tissues. They are lining the, um, they are uh, in the linings of the various tissues and uh, examples of that being cupboard cells in liver, alveolar macrophages. Then they are lining the spleen, the lymph node, osteoclast in bone, then uh, in kidney there are mesangial cells. So they are uh, lining the various tissues so they are uh, phagocytes mainly in tissues but macrophages are very efficient as phagocytes because they can phagocytose approximately 100 uh, particles and still after that also they can survive for years on the other hand neutrophils they can phagocytose only 3 to 20 bacteria and after that they die then neutrophils phagocytose small particles while macrophages can phagocytose even larger particles for example red blood cells then macrophages also phagocytose other particles in our body for example the cells undergoing apoptosis they are also phagocytosed by macrophages and neutrophils they are mainly for pyogenic organisms on the other hand macrophages are very effective against organisms which can live inside the cell so these uh, organisms enter into the cells and have the capacity to live in the cells macrophages are very efficient phagocytes for such kind of uh, organisms moving on to what are the steps of phagocytosis so phagocytosis consists of three steps these include recognition and attachment so phagocyte uh, should first recognize the particle which has to be phagocytose then there is engulfment okay that is eating up literally engulfment means eating up of the particle and then there is killing of this particle so what happens in each of these steps we will discuss first is recognition and attachment in recognition phagocyte basically recognizes this microbe by uh, identifying certain molecular patterns which are present on the membrane of the microbe. So here these molecular patterns are known as pathogen associated molecular pattern and these pathogen associated molecular patterns or PAMs as we call them they are very specific to the microbes only or anything which is foreign to us and these kind of patterns are not present in the self cells and this is important because these phagocytes should not identify and phagocytos our own cells right so these uh, PAMs are identified by the phagocytes by means of certain receptors which are present on these and these receptors are toll-like receptors, nod receptors, okay. So by means of these receptors, it identifies the PAMs. Then once these uh, microorganisms bind with these toll-like receptors, there are certain downstream events which take place. That means uh, with the binding, the receptor, some modification will take place and then there will be changes in certain enzyme activity like what we see in hormone mechanism of action right so similarly here downstream events will take place ultimately causing the dissociation of nuclear factor kappa beta which actually is bound to its inhibitor so that dissociation happen it gets separated from its inhibitor and moves to the nucleus so here is nucleus and nuclear factor kappa beta will move to the nucleus and once it moves to the nucleus it will cause the synthesis of certain proteins so these are known as pro-inflammatory proteins and it will cause the release of these proteins so because of this there is induction of inflammation as well so that is one aspect second it causes changes in the actin and myosin configuration within the cell 
so actin is a protein which is important for the movement of the cell and there is change in the configuration causing the change in the shape of the cell leading to the formation of pseudopods okay so now the process of engulfment starts because of this downstream events now these pseudopods form around the particle which is to be ingested and why around see initially the downstream events activated and then whatever are the pathogen associated molecular patterns and toll like receptors here they interact so here all of them interact and slowly slowly this membrane closes here right so there is a uh, fusion of the membrane and finally pinching of this part of the membrane occurs such that uh, you see a phagosome is formed within which the ingested particle is there so this is known as a phagosome now our phagocytes that is the neutrophils and uh, our macrophages have lysosomes right macrophages have lysosomes and neutrophils have certain granules so these are primary azurophilic granules right primary azurophilic granules and then there are secondary specific granules now these uh, granules have certain enzymes and proteins which have the ability to kill this um, bacteria or any foreign agent which has been ingested so these granules in the neutrophils go and fuse with this membrane of the phagosome right and in macrophages the lysosomes which are there they will go and fuse with this uh, phagosome and there will be formation of phagolysosome phagolysosome right so initially phagosome and then there is formation of phagolysosome and inside this phagolysosomes now the killing of the ingested particle occurs and so in this killing there are two types of mechanisms there are oxygen dependent mechanisms and second one there are oxygen independent mechanism so let us go into details of this what are the oxygen dependent and oxygen independent mechanisms so in the oxygen dependent mechanisms again we have two types there are reactive oxygen species and then there are reactive nitrogen intermediates so what are these reactive oxygen species as i told you before that there is fusion of uh, the granules of the neutrophils with the that uh, phagosome right so here on the membrane on the membrane there will be insertion of an enzyme that is NADPH oxidase, right? And this NADPH oxidase, now what it does, it uh, causes oxidization of NADPH to NADP with the formation of superoxide anion, right? So this superoxide anion is a uh, reactive oxygen species, right? Now this reactive oxygen species, superoxide anion, by uh, means of an enzyme superoxide dismutase is converted into hydrogen peroxide again a reactive oxygen species and this hydrogen peroxide can be converted into two either it can be converted to hydroxyl radical and this hydroxyl radical is the most powerful reactive oxygen species okay remember most powerful reactive oxygen species that is hydroxyl radical or this hydrogen peroxide by means of another enzyme MPO that is myeloperoxidase enzyme in presence of chloride ions this H2O2 is converted into hypochlorite ion hypochlorite ion and this H2O2 myeloperoxide halide system okay this is known as H2O2 H2O2 myeloperoxide halide system it is the most powerful killing mechanism of the neutrophils remember hydroxyl radical most powerful reactive oxygen species but h2o2 myeloperoxidase halide system is the most powerful killing mechanism of the neutrophil this is because this um, hypochlorite ion which is formed it is considered to be more stable right and so that's why this forms the most efficient killing mechanism now how these reactive oxygen species act we know that reactive oxygen species cause the oxidation of the lipids and proteins which are present on the membrane so that is damaging so that is oxygen depending killing mechanisms by reactive oxygen species moving on to reactive nitrogen intermediates so these reactive nitrogen intermediates form because 
our phagocytes have an enzyme inducible nitric oxide synthase there are different types of nitric oxide synthase there is endothelial then neuronal and this is inducible inducible means that what we discussed before that when pams will interact with the toll like receptor this nitric oxide synthase will be activated fine so this inducible nitric oxide synthase converts arginine to nitric oxide which combines with superoxide ion and forms peroxynitrite and peroxynitrite again acts by the same mechanism it causes the oxidation of the lipids and proteins of the membrane so these are the oxygen dependent killing mechanisms what about the oxygen independent killing mechanisms now those granules which we talked about they have various kind of uh, proteins or proteases which are important for oxygen independent killing mechanisms and these being cathepsin g bpi bpi is bactericidal permeability increasing protein then alpha defensins are there and both of these increase the permeability of the cell membrane cathepsin g is a protease and that also damages the membrane then another one we have is lysozyme lysozyme splits the mucopeptide which is present in the cell wall then we have lactoferrin lactoferrin forms a complex with iron and iron acts as a nutrient for the microbe so it forms a complex with iron and removes it from the microbe environment right then we have various proteolytic enzymes which damage the proteins of the microbe but also once the microbe is killed the remaining material which is there has also to be broken down so that is done by this proteolytic enzyme so these digest the killed microorganisms and after that is still some parts of the microbe will be remaining so that will be extruded out of the cell by exocytosis right so that was all about the phagocytosis we discussed about its definition professional phagocytes that is neutrophil macrophages and what is the differences between the two then we also discussed about the steps of the phagocytosis mainly three steps we discussed about the detail in each of the steps then killing mechanisms we discussed about the ros and rni that is reactive nitrogen intermediates and also the oxygen independent killing mechanisms thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open Thank you.